God, I thank you. It's on. Working it. Out. We're working it out. God ain't going to work it out. Already working it. I said God ain't going to work it out. He's already done working it out. Matter of fact, he and his son is working on our kids. Jesus said, I'm working and my father is working. So it's already worked out. God has worked it out. Can you say amen? Come on, Brother Steve. I'm not going to get cranked up. I'm excited. Yeah. Ooh, glory. Yeah, glory. Yeah, I said, I'm excited yeah. about what God is doing. Yeah. Ooh, glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 All right, verse 8. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Amen. Like the pastor is saying, God has already worked it out. Yes, he is. He's working on our behalf. He's there. Working on our behalf. And I thank God for it. Being there. No matter where I went, he was there. No matter where you went, how far you went, he was there. He's there all the time. Working it out for you and working it out for those who stay under the covenant. If you're outside the will of God, He's not working it out for you. And if you think he is, you're being fooled. And I'm here to tell you today, we've got to stay within the umbrella of God. In order for him to work it out for you, in order for him to hear you, he got to know who you are. He don't know you if you're running from him. So we got to stay under the covenant of the Father. Amen. 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 That scripture can come from Malachi. Starting in chapter 3, verse 6. We're going to start at verse 6. And when you're found, please stand for the reading of God's word. For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob, you are not consumed. Even from the days of your father, you are gone away from my ordinance, and have not kept it. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of earth. But ye say, what shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, what have we robbed you? In tithes and offers. You may be seen. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. I wrestled with this message. Talk to God. Didn't want to preach. But he said, preach. But I tell you, preach. The next time you preach, you preach this message. Wherever you preach, preach this message. But I didn't want to preach this message. But I had to be obedient. I had to do what the Father said. I had to do what my Father If I say I'm obedient to your Father, to you, and not, <coughs> and do contrary of that, then I'm not walking in truth. I'm not living what I'm preaching. In order to live what you preach, you got to live it and abide by it. 
in a flat to Eli. For as I am the Lord, I change not. Then will you send to Jacob. You are not to sin. What you're saying is you, it's not too late. It's not too late. You still have time to get it right. For even from the days of your father, you've gone away from my ordinance. What he's saying is you've run away. You've left me. Come back to me. Come back to where you belong. Come back to where you once was. Come back to me. Come back to me. Because I have life. Come back to me. Let me give you what you need. You've lost. You run away. You strayed from my word. You strayed from everything you knew. You went out. And you think you, you are doing well, but you're in destruction. You're headed for destruction. I'm here to tell you, come back. Return unto me. Return unto me. Come back to me. Because I love you. You're headed for destruction. Your destruction, you are going to be destroyed in the world. The world itself to be destroyed. There's nothing in the world for you. You are pilgrim. You're strangers out there now. You don't fit in. You're misfit. We all felt that way. We all felt that way. We're misfit because we came from God. We just pilgrim traveling through on our way somewhere. Now that you've got a taste of the goodness of the Lord and you went back God is saying, come back. Before it's too late. Don't get caught out there in your mess. Come back before it's too late. There's uh -huh. nothing out there for you. It's a fake illusion. Come back to me. And the reason why he's saying come back is because you're going to be destroyed. You're going to be destroyed. Come back. Before it's too late. Don't let the day end. And you still don't know who God is. Some of you don't know who God is. Don't let the day end. Not in His will. In the fullness of His will. Let God continue to use you. Let God continue to lift you up. And build you up. It's okay to serve God. There's nothing wrong with serving God. It's life in serving God. Let us continue to walk in His light. Outside the realm of God is darkness. Everything else out in the world is dark. It's gloom, it's sickness, it's habit. You're not in common because your soul is in agony. You want to turn back, but you're letting your pride hold you back. God said, let go of the pride. Pride is a killer of the soul. It's a killer of your life. Wake up. Come back. Our time is at hand. <coughs> Brother man, Bob God. Yet he said, you have robbed me. Not only of time to offer, but of your time. How much time do you give me? How much time do you spend with me? I have the praises of my people. I want to spend time with you, but you have time for everything else. You have time to go to work 40 hours a week, some of you 60 hours a week. There's 168 hours in a week. How much time do you give me? How much time do you spend with me? Ten minutes is not enough. <coughs> One hour in church is not enough. You rush to serve me. You rush to lead me. He's, I want to enjoy my creation. Anything you create and make, you want to enjoy. Anything you 
buy, you want to enjoy, you want to spend time doing it. God says, spend time with me. I am your creator. I gave you life. I don't want to destroy what I've made. I want to spend time with me. Either but you choose to run out and spend time with the world. Either you want to spend time with something that don't have no value to you. Oh Lord, hallelujah. But he said, spend time with me. I am the one that can sustain, sustain you. I am the one that holds you up. I am your backbone. I am the one that can give you eternal life. I am the one that can send you to death. He's but I much rather that you choose life that you may spend the rest of eternity with me. Your time will begin with me in eternity. He said you give it to the world. You give it to television. You give it to football games. What can a football game give you but a moment of satisfaction? What can the world give you but a moment of satisfaction? Baseball. Social. <laughs> but yet I can't get 10 minutes of prayer out of someone. Either I can't get an hour out of someone. Coming to church for two hours, all told. Either you give me 45 minutes. After 10 minutes of the word start being preached, your mind start wondering on other things. He said, what about me? I am the one that gives you life. I am the one that raised you up. I am the one that kept you. I am the one that hears your cry. But you choose to run to the world and the devil. The one that is a deceiver. You better give him more time to give me. You say you hear my word, you know my word, but you don't act upon it. Live for me. Live for me. Let me keep you. Return back to me. Let me continue to love you. I can love you more better than the world. I can love you more better than Facebook. I can love you more better than television, any football game, any basketball game. I can love you better than your job. I have more to offer you than your job. I have eternal life. But the world has separation and darkness to offer you. That is why you, you continue to struggle because you will not seek me. Seek me early while I can be maybe found. Draw nigh to me and I draw nigh to you. Talk to me in prayer. Not just for five minutes to get up and run, but wait for an answer. That is the only way we know what God is telling us is when we wait. We got to wait for an answer. We got to suck with Him. How can you get to know God if you won't talk to Him? How can you get to know God if you won't spend time with Him? We got to spend time with the Lord. One on one time. Yeah, it's good that we get together in the church building to draw strength from one another. But we're in a rush to get out. 
I might rather not be anywhere else but with the saints of God all day long. It don't bother me. Spend some time with God. Not just talking and laughing, but in His Word. Let's not get fidgety when the Word comes forth. Let's open our ears. Amen. Anoint our eyes with eyesight. Yes. That we may be able to see in the spiritual realm what God is trying to show us. How can we be warriors if we don't know what the chief is trying to tell us? How can the leader lead the soldier if they have not spent time with God? They got to spend time with God. I had to spend time with God with this message. How can the Joint Chief of Staff avoid the Commander Chief if they have not spent time? out on the battlefield. They got to see what's going on. There's a tactic. There's a warfare going on up in the spiritual realm. We cannot pull down a stronghold. We don't know what's going on. <laughs> In order to know what's going on, you got to be able to see the spiritual realm. We cannot fight a spiritual warfare. We're spiritually blind. We got to open our eyes. Spiritual eyes. Spiritual ears. So you may be able to hear. It's something that has to be applied to our lives. We have to walk in it. The pathway has already been made. He prepared a way for us. We got to walk through it. This is the only way we're going to be able to continue the good fight of faith. That's why some of us fall off to the wayside because we get tired because we're not rooted deep into the Word of God. The Word has not applied and took root into your spirit because you had a closed mind. Because you're looking at who it is standing up here under who it is speaking. God is speaking to us now. He said, come back to me. You've been gone too long. Egypt, why do you keep turning back to what was? Why do you want to keep going back to the wilderness? I brought you out of the wilderness. Why do you want to keep going back to Egypt? God said, I'm trying to bring you into the promised land. But you keep balking back. You keep throwing back. And then you're crying and you're complaining because nothing is going right for you. He's not getting anything going right for you when you're serving the devil, not me. I desire that you have life and have it more. He said, I sent my son Jesus to show you the way, to show you how. But you're still asking for me. He said, I give you all power. But you still won't use the power. Because you won't open up the instruction book and learn. He said, I gave you the power. I gave you the knowledge. I left the Holy Ghost here for you. But you won't take it on. Some of us pretend. And then we wonder why our lives are in shame. Because we ain't living right. Like we living it in the church building. But once we go outside the building, we're doing everything but what God proclaimed for us to do. He I am God, I change not. If you get the Holy Ghost in you, you are not changed. You understand what God's word and God's word on and no other thing will you want to hear or listen to. No other doctrine can be incriminated in your mind. The word of God is truth. <coughs> Don't let nobody else come to you preaching anything else other than what God said. 
out of this Bible is the Word of God. And out of this Bible is your instruction to life. God's Word is true. He said it, He performed it. His Word will not come back to Him bored. I'm a living witness, His Word won't come back bored. Live to live again. That's what I'm saying. I'm living to live again. You got to get in that mindset that you're living to live again. You got to get in the mindset that for God I die, for God I live, and I stand truly on that. You cannot tell, call me to denounce the word of God, the living God. Go ahead and cut my head off with shoot whatever you want to do. God is my creator. God is my redeemer. God is the truth and the light. His son Jesus Christ did come down and die for our sins, your sins, my sins. He did rise again with all power. He did conquer death. So no reason for the saints that die, God should die. We should live and not die. Because we live in Christ. Because we die and rose up again in Christ. So we shall live forever. But those of you that are on the house, come back. Tell somebody. Spend some time telling somebody about the goodness of the Lord. That's what he wants. That's spending time with God. It's not necessarily on your knees all the time, but it's telling somebody about Jesus Christ. It's telling somebody about God the Creator. Who created you? That's spending time with God. How are you living? Are you living a life that called men to come to God? Are you living in such a way that repels and turns them away? Examine yourselves. Look at how you're living. How you're living, when you examine yourself, we are our own worst critics. So when you look at how you live and ask yourself, would you want to live like would you want to live like them, like yourself? If you don't, nobody else to. Live your life in a manner that it'll draw me. Make somebody want to live like you. Want to get what you got. Want to get the same God, same Jesus, the Holy Ghost that you have. Want the joy that you have. To see you smile, want to dance, almost want to. Sometimes I just want to just shout sometimes. Because I'm just thinking about how much God has done for me. How far He brought me. Yeah. I've gone too far to turn back now. Right. I've tasted the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. I cannot turn back now. Yeah. I've gone too far. Yeah. God has been good to me. Yes. Better than me than I've been to myself. Yeah. Better than my mother will ever be to me. Yeah. Better than my wife will ever be to me. Yeah. God has been good to me. And I love him and I thank him and I praise him every day for him. I praise him all day long. You got to get that mindset. Think about where you've been. And think about where you came from. And how you got there. God kept you. Because somebody was praying. Somebody was praying for all of us. But God honor their prayer. Because it's the perfect prayer of a righteous. God listen. And when the words were spoken over to you, God said, my word will not come back home. So get back into where you belong. Come back to your first love. 
We fell off the love walk. Let's get back on the love walk. Let's get back to having that joy that we used to have. Let's get back to having that peace that we used to have. Let's get away from that stuff that's going on out in the world. That's on the outside. Let's get back into the realm of God. Let's get back into the high places. Under the shadow of his wings. Where we got protection from the world. Where the storms can't bother us. Where the wind and the rain won't bother us. Let's get under the protection of God. Let's live like we ought to be living, like we were designed to live. Let's get back to where we once were, where we were bought with a price to live this life of Christ. And let's bring somebody else in. Let's bring everybody in. He gave us power to snatch souls out of hell. These were one of the greater things and deeds that he told his disciples that you would do. Snatch a soul out of hell. But you can't snatch a soul out of hell if you're in hell too. Just saying. If I'm in a ditch, I can't get you out of the ditch. Somebody got me on the top with a strong anchor. If I'm anchored in Jesus, I can reach out and pull you out. If I'm anchored with the Holy Ghost, I can speak you out. With the Holy Ghost, I can pray you out and you'll move. But you gotta have faith. Faith come by him. Read in the Word of God. Indulge yourself in the Word of God, like you indulge yourself in the world. Once you start indulging yourself in the Word of God, you're quick worrying about what's going on in the world, because the world will get less and less. That's what happened to us. We started dimming down in the world a little bit. They would quit reading. They would down a little bit. They think you know you're all the way out and can't get back. So if you indulge yourself in the Word of God, the Word is life. The Word is alive. And if something is alive and working on you on the inside, can't nothing dead affect you. Your desire is to deal with something that has life in it. The Word of God has life. My desire is to deal with God. And see what He has to offer me. Feed on Him. Jesus said, eat of my flesh. Because my flesh is life. And my blood is drink. With my flesh, you'd never starve. Drinking my blood, you'd never thirst. Because out of it comes a spring of living water. Flow forever. Live a good life. Live a life of joy. Our time is getting short. We don't have a whole lot of time to run around no more. It's time to come in the house. Like our grandparents used to tell when they get dark and the light come on, you better be in the house. Jesus is telling us the light is getting ready to come on because he get ready to come. And you better be in the house. You better be in the house. 
If you're outside the house, you won't be able to come in. Don't be like the five fools version and wait too late. There's no worse thing than going to a film and wondering, did they have time? Did you have did they have time? I don't want to see y'all in that position. I don't want to be wondering, did you have time? I want to know that you had time and made time and was in. I want to be able to rejoice that you're going home. I don't want to wonder, did you have time to get it right? Did you know it was coming? Because we know not the hour all the time. But he said, be you prepared to go. Were you prepared? Take the time to get prepared. Not half-heartedly, but whole-heartedly. Know that you want to live forever. Our time started where we were born. I wasted half of my time. Did it happen. And my dog, a young dog is in out, in out. I wasn't ground and wasn't rooted. Wasn't rooted. But when I realized that I lived over three quarters of my life, full no out, acting fool, on the outside of the realm of God, he had grace and mercy on me. Mercy talked to grace. Live. Live a life of Christ. Let us not be in that caught in that situation. Tell all your loved ones. If you don't know the prayer, send them prayer. Get with somebody that can do it. Don't let nobody leave this room. And have not went through the center of prayer. I told my wife, where she's at? I said, take them through the center of prayer. Don't worry about it if they fire you for taking somebody through the center of prayer. We're concerned about a soul, not a job. That job is not our source. God is our source. God wants souls saved. It's a shame to live all your life going to church and don't know God. Something happened in the devil get your mind. And all that you have coming out of you has nothing to do with God. It's a shame to hear somebody one minute say, I have the love of God, the next minute curse me because their mind is all messed up. Because God, the word of God will not be rooted in their heart. What's in you will come out of you. You can tell one that had served God and served God religiously and, and fervently with spirit and truth because all comes out of them is the word of God. They're waiting on God to come take them home. They're waiting to go to glory. They, they looking for an, another life. They got a better life. They're ready to check out of here and go where there is a better life. They're ready to go to glory. Because they know this world is not their home. There's a better place. Those are at peace. But when you're in agony, you're crying out. Don't let your loved one go out like that. The word of God is not just for you to be kept hidden within you. Tell somebody. Teach somebody. We're all preachers and teachers of the word of God. If you study it, 
you'll want to teach it, you'll want to preach it to somebody. Let somebody know about the goodness of the Lord. But before you can do that, you have to indulge yourself in You have to get in the Word yourself. You can't tell somebody about something you don't know about yourself. If you don't know what you're talking about, don't nobody want to listen to you. But when you speak in the Word of life, ears want to hear. Walk. In your life. Don't go in the darkness. Don't walk away. Don't destroy your testimony. But once you do that, don't go out and hear nothing else you got to say. Don't live a life like that. Don't worry about if you're satisfying somebody. Worry about satisfying God. That's who I worry about satisfying. That's what I wrestle with. I want to know if I'm satisfying you. People are going to be people. People are going to be messy. If they're messy, leave them in the mess. Don't dwell on them. That bad seed will eventually corrupt you. It'll begin to suck the life out of you. Too many bad seeds. Before you know it, you'll be out there with them. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. But we're wrestling against spiritual darkness, wickedness, and evil. So we have to stay in the light. We have to read life. If we don't have life in us, what do we have? If you don't have life in you, what do you have? If you don't have light in you, what do you have? I can't see in the dark. So I have to continue to walk in the light. I much rather walk in God's light than what the devil had to offer me. I seen what he had to offer me. I had enough of what he had to offer me. I had enough of his trickery and deceit. That's all he designed to do. He may be pretty, he may be gorgeous, but don't get fooled. He will trick you, trip you up, and cause you to lose everything you have, including your very life. There's a lot in the grave this day that got tricked up. And didn't have time to get it right. And some of people are enough to say, didn't I preach in your name? Didn't I teach in your name? But got caught in the wrong place. And they would get this deep part. I never knew. You walk over the thing. So let us continue to live the life we talk about. It ain't no faking it till you make it. It don't work. A long time ago we used to say fake it till you make it, you might catch on. It ain't, it ain't happening no more. Keep on begging, and you'll pick yourself right to hell. <laughs> you will, you'll pick yourself right to hell. And when we look up and don't see you in heaven, you know where you're at. You walk bull legged outside the church. You can be jumping bull legged in hell. <laughs> So if you're faking, let's get it right. Let's not leave this place and don't have it right with God. Because it's not guaranteed. That you'll see next Sunday. 96-year-old lady that got knocked into the lake 
in Kingston, Tuesday. She had no idea when she left her house. She probably went in the five minutes and she probably had no idea that she wasn't going to come back to her house. But I hope and pray that she knew God. I hope and pray that she knew God. Because the simple fact that she had her help and strength to be able to walk down her steps and get in her automobile and know about where she was going. Clothed in her right mind still. At 96 years old. Some of us in our sickness can't even get up and go. But God has blessed her to be able to get up and move around. She lived way beyond her promised years. So she had to live a good life. I'm praying she lived a good life. I want to be able to move around like that when I'm 96 years old, jump in my automobile and go somewhere. But in order to do that, you got to preserve yourself. You got to preserve yourself with the word. We can't turn back time, but we can add some time. Add some time here on earth doing a good work for God. Live your life working for God, not for man, not for the world. Because the world don't have nothing to offer us but heart. And bills, and more bills, and more troubles, and more doctors. Let Jesus be a doctor. Let him take away your sickness. Let him heal. Use what he left here for us. We don't use it so we run to the doctor. We don't pray so these things come upon us. Pray and remove the scales. Not the dust off the gifts that have been given to you. And use them. We got gifts that we won't even use. Gifts that we won't even open up. Because we're afraid of what the world might think. Afraid of what somebody else might think. Don't worry about the person sitting next to you. And what they might think or what they might say. Let God use you. For his glory. Not for man's glory, but for his glory. Glorify him with your body, with your mind, and your soul. Let God use us. And the only way he can use us is if we're living for him. And he knows who we are. He don't use who he don't know. If you're outside of him, God, he don't know you. And if you're outside, I have some doubt. Don't leave this place. Don't let this service conclude without you getting the, getting back into the realm of God, coming back into the fold. Because this evening is not promised to Tomorrow is not promised. Next week is not promised. Don't say, I'm going to do it next week. I'm going to do it Wednesday in Bible study. You may not live to see Wednesday in Bible study. You've got to do it now. This time. In this place. It has to be done. This moment. This minute. Set your mind on the things of God. Set your mind on the things of Christ. Because if we don't, we're going to be in a world. We're going to be somewhere we didn't want to be. We're going to be somewhere we didn't intend to be. But let us choose life to live what God has called us to live. 
a life with him. I first father Adam messed up. But he said the son Jesus Christ who redeemed us and made a way for us to come back, to get back. He tore down the veil of the holiness of the That we may be able to come to the throne boldly. We don't need a priest. We can go for ourselves. We don't need to confess anything to man. But we need to go to God and pray. So there's no reason for anybody going to hell. There's no reason for anybody being separated from God. Boy. Let us pick up our cross and follow after. Let us take upon his yoke and learn of him. Because his yoke is easy. <clears throat> Don't lay down the cross and pick back up the burden. It's weighty. It's heavy. That's why he said he'll carry a force. He want to lighten our load. Clear our minds so we can focus on the Father. <laughs> That's why our mind should be at all, at all times is on the Father. That's how men pray without ceasing. Every idle moment of your mind ought to be on the thing of God, the kingdom of God. Have you ever wondered what's going on in the kingdom right now? Have you ever thought about what's going on right now? Have that mindset. <coughs> if your mind is set on Christ and on the kingdom of God, <coughs> you won't worry about what's going on in the government and politics. Anything is of confusion and chaos is not of God. God is the God of peace and love. The devil is in confusion chaos. He's seeking who he may destroy. He's looking for somebody that's weak. He's looking for somebody that's outside the sheepfold and out of the grass that he may devour. He devoured the weak link. He devoured the one that are nine producing that don't know the word, that can't stand on the word. If you don't know the word, you don't have no power. And if you don't have no power, you are vulnerable. And if you are vulnerable, you become a player. Stand up. Resist the devil. If you don't know any other scripture, it is written. That's all you got to do. Go ahead and double. It is written that man should not live by bread alone, by every word that proceeded by the mouth of God. It is written that you shall worship no other God but thy creator. That's all you have to do. Keep God on your mind. Let God be your first thing that pops up on your mind. Don't try to fight the devil with, with his word, because he'll defeat you every time. He knows the word, but he can't handle the word. That's why he has to believe it is this. As all you give him is the word of God, he, he will not stay. He got to leave by another way. He'll sit around waiting for you. Get weak at your weakest moment when tragedy strikes. He'll come at you again. That's when you're weak. Some of us succumb because 
we're not rooted, we're not grounded, we're disconnected from the branch, from the vine. Stay connected to the vine. The branches that are disconnected are swept up, cast away to the fire. Live. Be watered by the ever blessed <coughs> water. Be watered with the word. Be deep rooted in the word that you may continue to grow. Don't be stagnant. Let the word of God flourish in your life. <coughs> God bless you.